Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles. Today, we're going to talk about something I've talked about on several other episodes, but I just feel it's so important for us to talk about this subject, and there's so many areas we can touch on, but I just felt that leadership, leadership is one thing that, especially with what we've gone through, what you're going to go through, whether you're an entrepreneur, a team leader, whatever it is, leadership is one of those things that not only your company, your brand, but your team, and ultimately everyone that surrounds you is counting on. So I talk about in this podcast from the Visionary Chronicles, leadership formula. You know, what are these new leadership principles that companies are adopting, especially when you also look at the culture that we're in today? It's much different than it was even five years ago, much less 10. Uh, The culture, as we know, has changed from being in the office, engaging with one another face to face, Uh, to now it being a digital world, an at-home world, which is can be just as productive, but also can be more challenging. What we found is it's more challenging for leaders, um, challenging for them to be able to work with their team on -on one-on-one. So there's been so many leaders over the years that have loved that face-to-face interaction, and now they're challenged with not having that. So when we look at these new leadership principles, you know, what does a leader do? Um, faced with this environment and this new culture that we're living in. So what I look at was this new leadership formula, you know, different than what we were dealing with, again, five, even 10, five, 10 years ago. And how do leaders deal with this? So this new leadership formula is driven by the ability of a leader to motivate their teams to passionately embrace a vision for the long-term benefit of a brand. Now that becomes kind of a definition, but it becomes a formula for success on a leader. And some of the words, if you kind of take the context of what this is wrapped around is motivating and having a passion around what you're doing and the challenge that leaders are faced with, whether they're in the new culture we're in with at-home workers or the face-to-face that we were dealing with previously for generations, quite frankly. So it's a new type of environment, but a couple of things haven't changed. And this is what I talk about with the brands that I work with at Liquid Mind, is that the leaders and executives, as we go into these brands, we say motivation hasn't changed and also passion hasn't changed. Do you have to have a passion, not only for what you're doing, but also for what the brand stands for? And all of that is built off a foundation of your vision. And so that's why we're so passionate about the vision of a company and the leadership of a company, because ultimately the long-term benefit takes care of itself if you are motivating properly and you have a passionate team behind your brand. So this formula is not about being the nicest leader or someone who has a singular compassion for all, it's really about finding someone who can skillfully understand the needs and motivations of others and turn this into what I call an engine of progress and eventual pride for all. And so if you're going to be a great leader, you have to be a great leader at all levels, both personally and professionally. Now, I know a lot of people say, hey, separate work from home, but it doesn't work that way anymore. People want to know that you're compassionate, that you care about what they do beyond work, that they want to interact with you. So many times, or more often than not, the the most knowledgeable person in the room is usually not the leader. It's the one that can bring people together through a common vision and a passion around the company and the brand that they work for. So this is really where I find that followers are loyal to a leader if they have these traits. So being a respected leader is the goal, but few achieve this status. You know, why is that? Because what they want is someone who is caring, compassionate, someone that can also has the knowledge of where the vision of the company is going and how you're going to achieve that through knowledge. But 
Now balancing between knowledge and compassion and humility, giving credit to others, empowering what I call empowering your team to succeed is probably the overriding goal. More often than not, monetary compensation is pretty low on the totem pole for the new workers of this generation. So when you look at achieving that respect as a leader in this new generation, you know, most are either unwilling to be humble enough to share their credit, and I'm sure all of you have been around leaders where can you just please share the credit with those that are part of the team that help us achieve this goal? And I'm just shocked at, at so many times with brands and companies where they don't do that. And what I find is in almost every instance that the brands that I have been with personally, brands that we work with through Liquid Mind, those, you, those of you, those leaders out there, I can guarantee you that if you share credit, your humility, and you lead your team, they understand that you're the one that took them through the storm, but they're also the ones that grab the oars and help you get to shore. So when you're looking at that, be humble and share in the credit. Be smart enough to know what drives others. And this will allow you to set a foundation for success with your team, your company, your brand, whatever it is as a leader. And the other kind of oxymoron I look at a lot of times is that you have to be the smartest person in the room to be a leader. That's just not true. Knowledge is not what makes great leaders. It's those who understand how to empower people and give all the gratitude and praise to others. A leader who embraces others, not themselves. You know, we say, hey, give yourself a hug. It doesn't literally mean give yourself a hug. It means give others a hug for what they've done for you in order for the, to, for the team to succeed as a whole. So when you look at this, a truly great leader understands that for a vision to be realized, it must be adopted by all and shared by all until it's completed. Then you can celebrate embrace one another, and as a result, the leader gains respect, trust, and loyalty from his team as a result of sharing that win and also being humble with those who are around him. The vision is to know that by empowering others, you're empowering yourself to accomplish greater things than you by yourself would realize. And I find that to be really something when I talk to leaders that it doesn't really click with them until you tell them that, listen, people around you understand that you were involved in successfully building the company, helping them complete a project. Um, you know, I, again, I use this sports analogy so many times that, hey, if you've had a great game, you don't need to tell somebody what a great game you had. They will tell you, remember that as a business leader, that if you're as great as you think you are, certainly others are going to realize that, see it, recognize it, and also be more compassionate towards you because of the result that you are humble about it. So when you look at these, make sure that you understand what you're looking to accomplish as a result of empowering other people. So take off the cape. I said, you know what? Don't try to be Superman. Take off that cape, understand your limitations, and embrace the power of empowering others to succeed. That's so important. Take that cape off, understand your limitations, embrace the power of empowering others to succeed, not yourself. By design, you're a leader. Lead people. Give them the tools to succeed and empower them to realize the win. So understanding that everyone, I mean everyone has different motivations and usually very low on the list is monetary compensation versus personal acknowledgement of a job well done. It's something that doesn't cost you anything. You know, drop your pride, whatever you have to do. If your personality is not to be humble, get over it. Be humble 
and give the credit to other people. As a result of this, you will succeed. And I can guarantee you 100%, if you have these personality traits as a leader, again, I'll say with your team, it may not always be vocalized, but I can tell you internally, this is what they're thinking, is that they will have loyalty, trust, and be with you long term. There's nothing worse than consistent employee turnover. And that's one of the first things I look at when we start doing leadership series is I asked HR, what does the turnover look like? And if the turnover is very high with a particular team, a particular leader, whatever it is, I can almost guarantee you that some of these traits are built into that leader and the team doesn't appreciate it. And as a result, they feel as if they are not appreciated. And as a result, they leave. You don't want that. So get over it. Be humble. Ensure that you're giving credit to other people and you'll be rewarded as a result. So finding that balance is critical for great leaders and a mix that maximizes everybody's potential and builds passion across your entire team. Everybody working together, accomplishing a singular goal. Very similar to an orchestra. You know, you want to have everybody playing in the same tune, but everybody has their own responsibility. If a person doesn't know how to play the violin, get them off it and get them another instrument that he can play well. So these are all things that are analogies that are applicable to what we're talking about as a great leader in this new generation. So, so I picked out some of these, these areas that what are the traits of a, of a great leader in this new generation? So I say leadership formula, the new principles of leadership. This new leadership formula is comprised of many elements, but I'll just give you a few here that I think are the most important from, again, my time with, with global brands as well as all the brands we work with at Liquid Mind on leadership series and working with the management team and helping them to understand what a great leader looks like and how to achieve that. What do they need to change in their day-to-day -day routines and their personality, whatever it is. I can tell you the hardest thing to do is to get someone who has a personality trait to change it because it's been that way their entire life. But it's a challenge that's worth changing. So you want to make sure that you look at these leadership formula um, traits. So what we're looking at here first, as I say, number one is the, the perception versus reality. And, and what I say is be real. I mean, not just some of the time, all the time, but at the same time, don't be fake. Eventually somebody's going to catch on, you know, and I say, inevitably you'll stop pretending and trust will be broken with your team. I guarantee it. The second principle we look at is what I call the ladder. You know, these leaders that help team members climb the ladder to success versus pulling out from underneath them. And you've seen leaders like this. You know, they either are afraid, um, they get jealous, whatever it is, and they don't want to help their team member succeed. Now, remember, it's just not a team member you're looking to succeed. You're looking at your team as a whole. And bad news spreads much quicker than good news. So, Make sure that if you're an authentic leader, that others are going to spread the good news versus somebody spreading the bad news to others that don't want to be part of your team. So the latter is a very important one. The development is the third one, meaning provide the tools required for others to succeed. You say, well, wait, what about me? Well, what about you is you are a leader and your team needs to succeed and execute on the vision that you set for the brand. So how do you achieve that? You achieve that by making your team successful and being humble enough to give them the credit again for any success that you have, but for the betterment of the company as a whole. So the development is an important piece. The fourth is the social side. And I use two words here, and it's so true, is be human, okay? Be human with people, especially in this new generation. What you're seeing is before, you maybe were able to get away with it for a little bit on the face-to-face, -face, the in-persons, in the office, close your door, don't talk to anybody until they have a meeting. But now, based on where we're at, you have to talk with people. So you want to make sure that you are talking to people and being human. Your team is human. Treat them like one. 
great leaders are great communicators. So often I see this disconnect between people that say the knowledge is the number one priority. Well, I disagree. It's also being social interaction, the ability to drive your team, motivate your team and build a passion around them to succeed a unilateral vision for your company. That's the goal. And being social is a key ingredient to that, both personally and professionally. I don't care what anybody says. That's a key ingredient to successfully establishing yourself as a great leader. And the fifth is I go back to the analogy of an, of an orchestra. Um, you're a leader of many, each with a distinct skill set. So help them orchestrate and produce a great album. That's the key to being and driving an orchestra. And the sixth is the pressure. Great leaders absorb and distribute pressure. Ensure you're not unloading on others. Distribute carefully and with purpose. And what I say distribute carefully is don't unload on people. I don't care if it's verbally, whatever it may be, whatever your trade is. It's meant that you understand the pressure and you're put in that position as a leader to absorb that pressure and to be able to release that pressure in segments that are offloaded to your team, not as a whole, but in portions. So the pressure, great leaders absorb and distribute pressure. And so these are six traits. You know, I'm often asked, you know, if a great leader is born, you know, this may be both true and false is what I've found, you know, but I feel inherently great leaders are born and with the ability to lead, be compassionate and absorb pressure and other traits that are learned. You know, there are certain traits you can learn and there are other things where they're just not meant to be a leader and that's okay too, but don't pretend to be a leader if you're not. Understand your limitations and understand that your skill set may be better put in another spot inside the company where the company as a whole can benefit. So don't always think that because you're put in that position that that's what you should be if you're uncomfortable with it or you feel these traits aren't something that fit your mold, then maybe it's not for you. But I like pointing out areas of what a great leader and the traits look like in this new generation because it is more challenging for leaders. So, however, you know, you can understand what's needed to be a great leader, be committed to those traits, be authentic and be real. And your team will reward you with their loyalty. So again, kind of recapping these six points of this new generation of leadership, the perception versus reality, be real all the time. Number two, the ladder help team members climb the ladder to success versus you pulling it out from underneath them. The development, provide the tools they need to succeed. And the social side is be human. Your team is human. Be human with them. Interact with them. Engage with them. And the orchestra, you're the leader of many, each with a distinct skill set. Pull them out of them. Make this beautiful orchestrated music. And the company, again, will be rewarded as a result of you understanding the skill set of your team and how to best apply that to the success of the brand long term. And the, and the sixth is the pressure. Great leaders understand, absorb, and distribute pressure. Ensure you're not unloading on others. Distribute carefully and with purpose and intent. So again, um, these are some traits on this new generation of leadership. I understand how challenging it is, and I hopefully it's something you feel will benefit you as you move forward. So again, welcome to the Visionary Chronicles. If this is your first time listening to the Visionary Chronicles, we would appreciate you subscribing. Um, we have some great uh, guests coming on in the next month, uh, the two months here. Um, very high profile guests, so um, stay tuned for that. And also, if you have any questions or if you feel like there's a visionary out there that you would like us to interview, um, feel free to go to my website, B-R-Y-A-N-S-M-E-L-T-Z-E-R at our dot com. Um, or you can also go through our uh, company site, Liquid Mind Site, L-I-Q-U-I-D-M-I-N-D-S-I-T-E dot com. 
And you can fill that out and contact us as well. So we have guests lined up for the next three to four months. And so we look forward to having them come on and hopefully your journey will benefit from those guests coming on to the Visionary Chronicles. So as I always say, stay true, stay authentic, be different, be great and enjoy your journey along the way. I want to thank you for listening to the Visionary Podcast today. I really appreciate your time. And I hope you enjoy the subjects that we're bringing up here with the Visionary Chronicles. It's more diversified, talked about business strategy, areas of support that you need in functional areas, but also on the personal side. There's a lot of things that you deal with as an entrepreneur, small business owner, manager, or executive. So we want to make sure we're addressing those as well. So if you like the content, I just wanted to kind of put something out there that hopefully uh, you could join or subscribe to the Visionary Podcast, or at least give us a shout out on the rating. We'd really appreciate it. Um, we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, Pandora. And for those that do give us a rating, um, we're also going to be doing some giveaways. We'll have some t-shirts, some different stickers, uh, some rings that we're giving out, some super cool rings on the Visionary side. Um, and different subjects. If you've got some subjects you would like us to talk about, you can see when I, I introduce the, the podcast each week uh, that these usually come from our listeners on a subject area of concern with them or area that they would like me to talk about. Um, and also, we're going to be starting our interviews. And if there's anybody out there, um, we've got about 10 lined up right now. We have uh, former executives from Action Sports Industry, Sporting Good Industry, Ones that you'll find very intriguing. We're going to have also some graphic designers uh, that will be joining the podcast as well. So if you've got an idea of some people we might want to interview, I'd certainly appreciate it. We look forward to building our visionary community with you and appreciate your time and listening in and look forward to the next podcast and you being part of our community as well.